and welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented by the Women Business Owners Alliance. The WBOA consists of women entrepreneurs. We have a membership of over 100 members. The business women that you'll see on our program are all members of the WBOA and are excited to share their expertise and knowledge with you. So sit back, relax, and let them wow you with their expertise. My name is Carlene Hoffman, and I'm from The Clutter Doctor, and this is my co-host. Hi, I'm Susan Allen with Susan Allen Financial, and today we're going to be talking about right-sizing for senior housing. And I'm here with Ida Tassinari, and Ida, you're from? Uh, Real Living Realty Professionals. Okay, thank you. And Karen Zondele? I'm an interior designer, and my company is KDZ Designs. Okay, well, thank you for being here with us today. And I wanted to start with you, Ida. What's the first step? if someone is going to be downsizing or getting or thinking about senior housing you know you're at that point where you may be retiring or in retirement what should they start to think about well one of the first things they should do is if they've decided that that's the way they want to make the move they would contact a realtor mm -hmm. and one like myself that has the knowledge for senior services that helps them make that life transition okay. they you need to know where you are before you can get to that next chapter of your life. So you'd want to contact a real estate agent. Um, they'll be able to give you some idea of the value of your house. Mm -hmm. So you know where you're going to go to your next step and be able to have that fit into your budget. And most realtors today will also have a wealth of information about right sizing, uh, where you want to go, the type of property that you need to go to. But you need to find out all the pieces that go along with that, mm -hmm. which would be somebody to help you declutter your house. Okay. You want to start the, the moving transition isn't usually uh, overnight. You need mm -hmm. to take the time to get rid of or you know transfer some of your long time um, items that you've had and maybe your family members want them or you'd like to donate them. And then you would have them do a market analysis and she would give you or they would give you the additional information that you would need to go to the next step by placing your house on the market the additional information with the downsizing um, adding that information about the condition of the house and what you need to do to get it market ready okay. now do you have any tips on trying to find a senior living you know that might be of interest to you uh, yes, I have the designation from the National Board of Realtors as a senior real estate specialist, which means I've gone through the class and graduated with um, a whole wealth of information uh, on making the transition into senior living. Uh, the next step, either it be a single family house or a community. And one of the biggest things, depending on the clients that you're dealing with, is you want to have them understand it's a team effort. So you want to have them have their family members, their siblings, or maybe sisters, or someone there with them to understand that you may need somebody else's help and you can't do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. So you would have that information in your toolkit to have the people that get rid of excess uh, trash in the basement, people that are going to do the painting, and any of the ideas that need to go with that. And Karen, what about most people, well a lot of people like mm -hmm. to stay in their own home. So what about the design if they'd prefer to stay in their own home? Should they make modifications or what, what are some things to look at? Well I think even if you're buying a home in your 30s, it mm -hmm. never hurts to think about how long do you want to stay there. If you want to be there for the long term, you can start making modifications even then. So as you age and in your own home, you know, we're all aging, we're all going to see changes in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's even great for resale in real estate if you plan for that as early as you can because you know, when we look at our population as of 2050, 20% uh, of us are going to be over 65. Mm. So that's really something to consider no matter what age you are. But specifically, if you are older and you want to think about staying in your home, if you bring in um, an interior designer, particularly one who's uh, been to school or cognizant of things like universal design, which is really designing for everybody as well as you can. That's mm -hmm. a really simplified way of stating it. But 
you can look at everything from what is the traffic flow in your own home. Um, Ida and I were talking earlier and some people uh, as they age don't think about area rugs or scatter rugs that mm -hmm. they can trip over. Falling is a huge consideration uh, as you age and so you want to make your space as you want to allow your space to make you as able as possible. Uh, so there are certainly any number of things uh, that you can do. Brighter paint colors uh, are important as you age in that your eyesight changes. You mm -hmm. may see things through more of an amber light. Okay. So your lighting, even light bulbs, you may find you require uh, a greater wattage or lumens when mm -hmm. you read. There are quite a number of things that uh, interior designers can really identify that will make your experience without making significant modifications better. Then if you're ready to remodel or if you decide you want to downsize because you don't need four bedrooms upstairs and maybe you don't want stairs anymore, that's a real okay. concern that a lot mm -hmm. of people have. You want to move to one floor and whether it's in an independent living community or whether Ida finds the perfect house for you that's smaller mm -hmm. than what you have now, um, there are a lot of things if you bring in a contractor uh, and a designer or even an architect to work with as well mm -hmm. that you can identify areas throughout the home. Uh, kitchens are a uh, consideration. How high do you reach when you're 45? What happens to your arm strength as you age? It tends to decrease. Uh, how tall are you? How short are you? What should counter <laughs> heights be? You know, uh, these, are, these are things that will help you at any age, but as you age, they become much more significant. And, you know, even the scale of your furniture, if you have so many items in your home, and that speaks to clutter, uh, but even the size of your furnishings, you may find that you don't move around them well. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you change out some of your furnishings so your, your paths through the house are even clearer? So all those kinds of things can add up to making you a lot more comfortable in your home. And what about bathrooms as far as showers and can those there, all be yeah, modified there are, or there what all would kinds you suggest? Of, the ADA, which is the American Disabilities Act, which doesn't apply to residential structures but is a guideline for uh, both physical and cognitive um, dealing with how you move through your environment. Uh, and it was updated actually in 2010 for ex specifically for accessibility. Those that whole thing gives you a minimum idea of how you can make space more accessible to you. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do in bathrooms is you can find toilets that are a few inches higher than a standard toilet might be. Okay. You can remove a curb when you move into a shower, get rid of a bathtub, make it a shower mm -hmm. with no curb. Although I will say again, this can be very specific to the client. I had a client who has Parkinson's as, and as he's aging, it's becoming more difficult for him to move. But in talking to some ADA folks, I called about what's the best way to deal with his bathroom. They were very clear about speak to the individual because sometimes people might find it helpful to have a curb when in fact, I as a designer would say across the board, no, you shouldn't have one. Mm -hmm. Occasionally you'll find a client who prefers one. But in a shower, a bench with a hand shower that reaches to the bench is very important. Um, good strong light in a bathroom and dimmable light in a bathroom is helpful. Make sure you put a light in the shower. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of updates that you can make. What about um, coming into the house, like the doors? Is there anything you can change with that? that I would put a, a lever okay. on the door that makes it easier for all of us. If I'm carrying bags of groceries and I walk up to a door, it's a lot easier to use a lever to get mm -hmm. into the house, and that's true. I mean, the fewer steps you take, if it's a flat, you can go uh, you know, on an incline or a decline to get in and out of the house, that's better than steps. Within the house, the idea of thresholds being shorter, it's somewhere between a quarter and a half an inch. You don't want to go above that. Think about that as you move towards your entrance door, however you enter, whether it's through a garage mm -hmm. or just be, it's important to be cognizant of, of that kind of thing. And wider doors are much okay. better as well. Yeah. And then, you know, there are considerations if your mobility is such that you need to be in a wheelchair chair, or that's an expectation at some point. Um, spaces need to be bigger for movement. Even if you go back to the bathroom for a minute, you can have mm -hmm. your countertop and your vanity with no cabinets underneath it, which means you can roll right up to the sink. 
So okay. that's something that they take uh, into consideration in institutions and commercial applications. Mm -hmm. So um, there are a whole lot of things that you can yeah, do to modify your a space. Lot, a lot to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's important to really you know, work with an expert if you can. Now, as far as if someone is going to um, start looking at senior housing, they do, they've made the d decision to move. Where do they start with that? The over 55, I know there's locations that are for over 55 only. Yes. Uh, now, uh, you had asked me earlier, um, if they were looking for a senior real estate specialist, they could go on the website for the licensees and find that, and usually, uh, most of the national realtor boards in our local area also would have a list of the s uh, s specific agents that have that uh, designation okay. in there. And with that, they also have you go through the training for determining what type of living, next step living they would like, either a community living or some of them want that independence of having their own home. And there's different levels when you get into that. Okay. But you also have to have the family on board mm -hmm. because mom and dad, you know, might want to make a decision that the family feels m maybe isn't in their best interest. But that's why it's good to have that in the beginning to have a meeting of the minds and then make the, n the next best step for their personal needs and what they're looking for. So say somebody decided that they wanted to live in a community, how do you... How do you stay on track? Do you have any tips for, you know, you're going to tour all these different communities and after a while I'm assuming <laughs> it gets confusing. Yes. So how can you keep yourself on track? Well, the one thing is to have a trusted a real estate agent that's going to help you, advise you in all of the communities. They will have people there that give you the tours. And what you want to do is look at the community. Are they offering the services as a la carte? are all-inclusive and what are your needs the best decision I would tell anyone is that whatever the age is but if they had a condition that they knew was going to be uh, getting worse with age you want to be able to age and not have to make the major move again so you right. make sure that there's different <laughs> levels Level. of service yep. in each community and so if something happened you would have the ability to change or add on to those. And you want to make sure, I personally would tell them to talk to some of the residents and see how they feel. And it's like anything else in any major move. It takes a while. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is you have, the easiest way is if the senior that are making the move, if they're the ones that want to do it. Because they know if you make the move today, you're going to have control and you have decision power that you can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. If you wait until you've now broken a hip and you're in a rehab facility, the placement of your next location to live, you may not have as many options as you do today. So one of the things that I like to tell people my age or even younger, maybe in their 50s, is have the talk. You talk to your parents about mom and dad. Have you thought about, are you gonna be able to stay in this house for another 15, 20 years? Mm -hmm. Or whatever the time frame is. And usually they're gonna say, oh no, I'm gonna live here forever. But you give it to them like eating an elephant, a little piece at a time. So you bring up the subject and you bring it up again and maybe tell them about Mrs. Smith's move down to the community living and she really likes the community. And then take her there for lunch. Most of these places, you call up and say, we'd like to come for lunch to see if we like the cuisine and the, the meal planning. And they have chefs in all of these places. To me, they're like country clubs. Right. Mm -hmm. you know. So now we've made the decision that you know we found the spot that we would like to be in, and we're going to place our house up on the market. And I know one of the first things you have to do is to get rid of the clutter. So maybe you want to hire a professional organizer to come help, or you want to gather some family and friends to come and help and you want to take the time to make sure that you're um, taking the things that you own and making proper donations and not just putting them in the trash. So you're doing that, you're kind of clearing out the clutter, you're opening up the space in your home, but then what happens after that? I think the concern I would have is how do you know 
what to do for updates to make your house sellable without carrying it too far. Right, exactly. So when a real estate agent would come in, give them a market analysis. Okay. The market analysis is going to tell them what the value of that home is in today's market with the market conditions in your neighborhood. Now, if there's what I like to call is deferred maintenance, if you've lived in your house for 20, 30 years, yeah. you have to have someone come in with what I call fresh eyes because they've always looked at that wallpaper, but it's been there for 40 years. So <laughs> those would be the things, you know, to, you're not decorating the house for the way you want to live in it. You want to present your house for the today's buyer. Right. And today's buyers have different styles and tastes than what the homeowners, homeowners. May, may have had 40 years ago. So those would be the ideas of after the market analysis. Now, if they replaced the roof and updated the furnace, you have a lot of things when it comes to selling a house. You expect to have a roof on the house, you expect to have a working furnace, okay. and you want floors. The color of the walls, you know, that's all incidental which you have a nice decorator like mm -hmm. Karen come in and straighten that out for you. But you want to have something, a neutral palette. So when they walk into your house, they can imagine their belongings and how it fits. And Karen had mentioned about the size of the furniture. Right, if yeah. you have six pieces in your living room and you can barely get down the hallway because it's <laughs> blocking this and the huge TV, you need to subtract. And usually, the more you subtract, the room looks larger. And you also want to keep in mind mm -hmm. is the traffic pattern of the property. You don't want that big recliner blocking the doorway into the kitchen. You want to have that in mind. And those are some of the things that you want to keep in mind as a seller, that it's not the same as when you're living in the house. Because now you're changing, you want to move on to that next level. So what if you have the famous pink bathroom with the pink tub <coughs> and the pink toilet? Are you expected to redo that bathroom before you put the house up on the market? No, no. Okay. Because the, the biggest thing is, is that if someone said you need to, you know, start a total remodel on that bathroom, after talking to Karen, the decorator, she would give you the right advice. And then you've now spent twenty or $30,000. There's no guarantee the You'll return be on your investment is going to be there, but a realtor would give you some sense, and usually the return on investment sometimes takes a longer period um, because today's buyers are only willing what they feel the market will bear. Mm -hmm. And most buyers today, 87% to 90% start on the internet. And that's one of the biggest things is have the pictures online where they're making that first impression not show the doilies hanging over the sofa <laughs> or the dish towels and the dishes, you know, you want it to look like HGTV. So now we've gotten to the point, we, we've made that decision that we're gonna move and we've cleared out the clutter and we've done maybe a few little updates. We've taken down the yucky wallpaper and put up a nice fresh palette of paint um, and maybe um, moved a few little things around and then would maybe Karen, somebody like Karen would come in and do a little home staging. Do you have any tips for that? Um, well, actually I'm not entirely a home stager. I'm mostly, you know, in the new home and doing uh, new construction um, or renovation work. What I would say about home staging was adding to what Ida already said, which is you want a buyer to walk in and say, wow, I can see myself in this space. And I would go further and say, yeah, remove furnishings. Sometimes you want to bring in new furnishings. Mm -hmm. So whether you can find some place to rent them or you buy something that you will then ultimately move to your new home, you have something fresh. And you can create focal points in the house as well. Perhaps you put a lovely vase of flowers somewhere because you don't want people to look at something that's perhaps a little less attractive, but it's not important for you to change that. The new buyer will come in and change it. Um, and I would say that about you know things like bathrooms. A new buyer and the kitchen is probably gonna come in and wanna make those spaces their own. It might not be today or tomorrow, but it might be five years down the line. So for you to put in a lot of work on your old house to 
update something that may in fact not be to the person, the buyer's taste. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's where okay, that right. doesn't make yeah. sense. So um, now we've, we've done the home staging. We've gone through all these little steps and now today's the big day and it's opening day. First day it's going out on the market and we have some people scheduled to come in. So Ida, what would you recommend that people do in order to um, make the house a happy visit when people come through? Right. Uh, well, if this is an open house or a private showing, mm -hmm. I would give them the same information to the home seller, is you want to make sure that everything is neat as if you're having company, because the guest coming to see your house is your company. So you want to make sure that maybe you have those fresh flowers. And sometimes just putting a, a tablecloth and a, a, a placemat with china, that's going to make it look more inviting okay. and that's yep. somewhat mm -hmm. of a staging as well. But you also want to let the sellers know that we, you know, you want to make sure that you don't leave anything out that you don't want them to, you know, be looking at mm -hmm. and keep everything tucked mm -hmm. away. And it is sometimes a challenge because when you're selling your house, it's like having a house guest that doesn't leave because you're always on mm -hmm. the ready. Right. right. And do you um, <coughs> put all the lights on in all oh, the definitely. rooms? You do. Definitely. Okay. You definitely want mm -hmm. to have the house looking as bright as possible. Most agents are going to go around and pull all the shades open, okay, that the mini was blinds next. or whatever it is, because you want to have the brightest, most welcoming space possible. Mm -hmm. And when people come to an open house, some will stay 30 seconds, some will stay 30 minutes. So you want the people that are there starting to place the furniture in their new home right. at that open house right. where they can see themselves living there. And what about that cachet of baking cookies, having some fresh um, baked I cookies? Have, I have done that myself. The biggest thing is any um, householders like do not make the corned beef and cabbage just before <laughs> the uh, you know, St. Patrick's yeah. Day parade and make sure Mr. Kitty and Doggy gets outside for their walks. And okay. if you have a smoker, you want to see if you could get them to smoke outside because okay. that's very offensive to most buyers that are non-smokers. Oh, so Karen, I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you, what preparations can you make like in the physical space if you're going to have a parent move in with you? That's also a senior option, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think that's something where you as the person bringing a parent, in, you really have to understand the needs of mm -hmm. the parent. And as Ida was saying earlier, you have to understand the current age and how long is this a more temporary mm -hmm. something do you are you inviting this parent to stay as long as possible is it really part of a recovery until the parent is able to move into another location you know how are you how are you looking at that but then i think a lot of it is that same analysis of Imagine yourself as your parent moving through the space. Mm -hmm. Don't put your parent upstairs with a staircase <laughs> that they have to manage right. if that's okay. a mobility issue for mm -hmm. them. Uh, but so I think it, it requires a lot of understanding and investigation of what does aging mean and, and how is your how is that parent of yours doing and, mm -hmm. and what are your expectations and what is that parent's expectations? I think you know, there are in-law apartments, you know, some people do buy homes with the, the expectation that their in-laws or their parents will be mm -hmm. moving in. And it's really important if you're evaluating a space, let's say you're looking for a new home and you want to evaluate, and it has a space like that, you really need to think about uh, moving through the space, what the bathroom is like, are they doing their own cooking, how, you know, all of these things. Because even if you're, you know, you're aging yourself, you're in your own home, what services are you bringing in for yourself or for your parents? That's really something to understand through your, through your own municipality. Mm -hmm. What's offered, uh, what services are available. Uh, so there, there are an awful lot of considerations. Financial certainly are another mm -hmm. consideration Absolutely. about what does all that mean. Uh, for you, so it's it's not for the faint of heart this aging thing, um, or having <laughs> aging, or having aging parents. So I, I think that's pretty much included all of us. Right, so. and also in most towns, you just can't start building a, an extra right. Um, they're older. living. I, I right. want to address that too because they're in most codes. communities, you cannot have an in-law apartment or an ensuite if you don't have a stove. Mm -hmm. You have a kitchenette with mm -hmm. a refrigerator and a microwave and a sink, that's allowable. But it's when you put in that stove 
that most of the mm -hmm. cities don't allow that ordinance. But I did want to throw in one other thing about the seniors and going through the real estate transaction. We don't want to have any seniors or anybody feel that they're not valued as a human being and you always want to treat them with respect. And I would also ask them, when we do our communication back and forth, do you want me to call you on the telephone? Do you want me to give you a text message? Do you want me to email you? Each individual just because they're 80 doesn't mean they don't text and they don't email. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean it's True. a generational yeah, I never thing think of that. and right. their younger children, well with all clients, I ask them which is the best way of communication uh, to correspond with them. But just because they're older doesn't mean they haven't learned how to text. So that's something to keep in mind too. Mm -hmm. To and also, them with respect. also, I have a question as far as, let's say uh, someone is thinking of going to community living. What about if they have a pet or pets? Well, that's How something that you definitely work? want to look into, and a lot of them are um, pet friendly. Mm -hmm. I would assume that in most of the communities, they're going to have a little restriction on the type of dog. Mm -hmm. The inside Size. cats are mm -hmm. fine, but there's certain dogs that might be, um, mm -hmm. they usually would have to have their temperament uh, checked that to see if they're vicious if they ever bought a bit anybody before that's something to keep in mind and then uh -huh. they would also have to respect the community and have the doggy do their business in the business area okay. not in the walking path you know okay, be course, respectful yes. of others okay. but some communities do allow animals right. and Karen is there mm -hmm. anything else you think we should know about designing for you know, senior living? Well, uh, I think as Ida was pointing out, it's an incredibly stressful process um, in general. I mean, I'm sure Ida spends a lot of time explaining to clients, you know, what, as we just did, what is this process like? And no matter what your age, uh, it's a very personal thing that you're going through when you sell your home and you purchase a new home. And I think as you age, you know, that level of stress can have a greater impact on you. So I think it's very important to consider uh, the client and what the client is going through. Um, but I would say, and really this does apply to any age, it's always important for any design professional to really connect with the client and understand those client needs. And you, I find, and I'm sure most people do, that every client is really rather different from every other client. And mm -hmm. so, you know, just because somebody's 85 doesn't mean this person might not be bursting with energy. And that person's needs may be very different from another 85-year-old. Mm -hmm. uh, so true. it's important to recognize each individual as an individual. And then as a, the other thing I would say is to think about this process of how do you help create an environment uh, that encourages ability, mm -hmm. cognitive ability or physical ability. And that's really what design is all about. Good design helps people feel comfortable in their environment. Okay. It's great to have lovely things around you, however you define those lovely things. You can have the most tremendous looking painting sitting above your fireplace but if you sit and look at it in a chair that you don't find comfortable <laughs> you're never going to see that painting true but if you are comfortable in your environment then you're going to be able to take it in and it's really going to enhance your life so I think it's very important to keep those kinds of things in mind it makes sense well I wanted to thank you Ida thank for joining you. us and My Karen pleasure. I wanted to thank you also thank you. and to our viewers I hope you did learn a lot and if you would like to find out more about Karen and Ida you can visit WBOA.org and learn a little bit more about what they do and how it can help you thank you and see you again